worked on uh, things leading to Rosh Hashanah, and today I'd like to be able to continue. Mm -hmm. And there was an item that I wanted to discuss last week, and it needed more time. So I hope we do it now. My grandfather, my grandfather's father-in-law, was a Belzer Hasid, and um, I had the opportunity of going into the Belzer Big Shul in Jerusalem and talking with them. Uh, first, they didn't know should they even talk with me, you know. <laughs> uh, but when I started to tell them a little bit about the uh, Nigunim that I knew and about my great-grandfather, whose name was Yosef Chaim, and they knew him as Yosele Krakowitz. So he made a Nigun among several other Nigunim that he did. For the Tfile Heye Im Pipi of Shluche Amcha Beit Yisrael. You know, it's the same way as Hineni Heyani Mimas is uh, what they would call a Rishut Tfile. It's like saying, I'm trying to take permission, though unworthy and so on and so forth, uh, to speak on behalf of those people who have sent me and so on and so forth. That's the tefillah that the Shliach Tzibur says. Mm -hmm. But there is another tefillah in the, in the Machser, and I haven't got it handy right now, but it doesn't matter, I'll tell you about it, which goes, Elokeinu velokei avoseinu, Heye im pipiot shluche amcha beit Yisrael. Be with the mouths of those who have been appointed of by your people, Israel. Levakesh rachamim tfila v'tachnuni milfanecha to pray for you. Alai ve'al sholcha. And he has this whole. No, no, it goes the other way. Sorry. The congregation prays, in this case, for the chazan. It says, Dear God, you be with those shlichim who are now about to go and, and pray. And so, most of the time in congregations where they did recite it, the chazan said it. And that's a mistake. Mm -hmm. And I'd want to say that this would be very lovely to incorporate in the service. If it were to be made a statement at the beginning with whoever is there, which would be something like this. L'shem yechud kutsh v'richu shchinta for the sake of the unification of God and the shchina. We pray that those people who are in charge of the service tonight should be in harmony with your will should achieve what they are to achieve so that we might learn so be so we, that we might be inspired so that we might be brought closer to you and to help clean help uh, heal the world okay could you imagine if the whole kahal were to make such a statement what a different yachas it would be no longer performance so ruth Leib, we get just that formula, we'll write it out and we'll let people know about that. Mm -hmm. They can modify it as they need to, but the fact that this would already set them up in a relationship. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So his nigging for that went like this. <laughs> Oh, I'm the one who's <laughs> been 
I think I have this one on Lachaim to the words that go Mayim Rabim Mayim Rabim Lo Yochlu Lechabot Et Ha'ahava Un Harod Lo Yishtefuha Un Harod Lo Yishtefuha Ay, 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 Mayim Rabim Mayim Rabim Lo Yochlu Lechabot Et Ha'ahava Un Harod Lo Yishtefuha Un Harod Lo Yishtefuha Simeni Kachot Amalive Kachotem Azavoich Ki kasha ka mavet ahava Kasha ka she ol kina Tri yada da da iram Yada di da dam Yada da da dam Yada di da dam Yada di da dam Yada di da dam Yai da 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 hom Yai da 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 Rish ve yesh Rish ve yesh al hebet yam Shema he ha Rish ve yesh Di da 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 di da 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 Di da da So it's a nigm that when you get to uh, that movement goes ya da da ay da di da dum it's the best way in which you can say you're such a good daddy please don't refuse you know ay da da dum ay da 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 dum i know that you will be kind to me so i can relax I da di da da. We get it. We can see how the nigun takes us to places. So, you have a copy of the um, Wachain thing. Have you got your copy? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I want you to chant with me just uh, the text until we get to um, Hamelach Hakadosh. Okay. And I'd like you to uh, do two things. At once sing and chant it up like a prayer, but also, n for our sake, note any bumps in the road. So if later on when we can talk about it, you can raise the points, okay? Ah. Ve'ematecha 
על כל מה שבראת. ויראו חכו ובעולם מעשים, וישתחוו לפניך כה ובעול הברואים. ויעשו חוב ובעולם אגודה אחד לעשות. רצונך ולבב שלם. You gotta sing along, you can't just listen, okay? That's important. אי כמו שידענו, אדוני אלוהינו, שהשיר תום לבוב עונך, אוהב ובויס. ביודך וגבורה מימך ושימך נוער על כל מה שבראשו וכן תן כבוד אדוני לימך תהילה לראייך ותקווה טובה על דוב וברשך ופתחון פה למייחלים לך שמחה לארצך וששון לעירך ושמיכת קרן לדוד עבדך ואריכת מאיר לבן ישי משיחך במהרה ויאמנו ובכן צדיקים יראו וישמחו וישרים יעלזו וחסידים בין יגילו ויולדה תקפץ פיה וכל אישה קרובו לה כישן תכלה כי תעביר ממשלת זדון מן הארץ תמלוך, אתה אדוני לבדך על כל מעשיך, בהר ציון משכן כבודך, ובירושלים עיר קדשך, ככתוב בדברי קדשך. אם לא אדוני לעולם, אלא היציאות לדור ודור. הללויה. אי קדוש אתה ונורא שמך, ויהנה לו מבלעדיך. כתוב ויקבע אדוני צבאות במשפט והאל הקדוש נקדש בצדקה ברוך אתה המלך הקדוש.
טוב. So, I started last week and didn't quite get into the subject of Binyan HaMalchut. And that's uh, what I want to concentrate on, because in um, the writings of uh, Rav Yitzchak Luria, that whole, I'm beginning with the Zohar, that whole great story of how Adam, the first Yubin, was one. And there needed to be, out of this oneness, a two-ness had to come. And it wasn't an easy two-ness, you know? They call it Nesira. It's all Nesira, like you take a Nesir, you, uh, you saw him apart. Mm -hmm. And they say you can still feel where we were sawn apart by running up our spine, you know, like the saw marks. Okay. <laughs> um, so, now, you see, every time we hear a story like this, and um, even when I sort of, how was the word I'm looking for? Burlesque it a bit, you know? There is underneath something that is uh, really important. So we learned how the Slonima was saying that Rosh Hashanah has something to do with the head of the year, that all the th these things come out of the head, as it were. Head is an interesting word because he went right away and put it into the, four, the 613, you know, 248 limbs, uh, 365 veins, and so on and so forth. But if I ask myself, what does it mean when it, tells us about how those w one had to become two and what, what the process was. So when they call it the sawing apart, I mean to say that there's a, almost like a pain and a noise involved, you know. Uh, do we have to, you know? It's like a geschrei and that. And that starts to build the tension so that the twosy should want to come back to the one, right? So. He talks about that um, nesira and to masculine and feminine, and then he's saying something about that since the feminine is malchut, Rosh Hashanah has everything to do with melech, it is to establish malchut, it is called, therefore, that uh, binyan a malchut, you have to build the malchut. So in the Sforim, the Hasidic Sforim, they go back, reach back into Rabbi Yisrael Gloria and the issue of uh, the Tzimtzum and wants to find out what was he talking about, you know. And when Hasidus comes, it tries to take that which is in Kabbalese, like up there in heaven, the Malchus has to be built, you know, like a mythic. Instead of that, it says, we need to build a Malchus, you know, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's take it on our shoulders. Let's, you know, be the Kabul or Malchus Shemaim. That's an important response to that. So then there are some Rebbes who are saying, I tried it. The question is, how do you do that, you know? How do you do it? Can you teach me how to do that? And some of this forum are helpful, and some of this forum aren't so helpful. But I'm trying to make a, an attempt in the direction of what this is all about, okay? So Rav Yisak Luria says, way, 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 way back, before anything yet, where Ein Sof was all alone, unmoved, you know, in that place. He has there like a, how would I say, uh, 
a little sensitivity developing in Ein Sof. And that is what we want to get to when it says to you, you know, that Ze Hayom Techilat Maasecha Zikaron Liyom Rishon is the memory. Sorry. Alan <laughs> Vasalan. It is the memory. I lost my train of thought. Help me. You're, Zeh, you're a Zeh wonderful Zeh distraction. Zeh okay. Zeh huh? Zeh you said it off. Yes, Zeh Hayom Very good. When you say Tchilat uh, Maasecha, he's talking about how the Ein Sof gets the itch, where the Ein Sof has it, where it gets the itch. That's the place of the beginning of it all, where it's called Tchilat Maasecha. And it says Zikaron. Liyom Rishon. We have to try and remember, that's a wonderful word too, to that first day, okay, to that Yom Rishon. So if I were to ask you what happened on Yom Rishon, what would you say? Hmm? The creation of light. Uh huh. You go back to the creation of light. But at the bottom, when it says Vayi Ere Vayi Vokher, does it say Yom Rishon? No. <laughs> so there seems to be a Yom Rishon that's more Rishon than the Echad. Okay. So that's a, a um, wonderful conundrum here, you know, that Echad begins in Echad Amanui, Echad Sheni, Shlishi, you know. But if you go to the place you want to say it is the first, it's the Kedem of Kedem, it's the, the beginning of Haskhala. If you hear uh, and the opening of the Zohar is so beautiful on this Bereish Humanuta de Malka Galif Galifa Betira Ila Say it again. The uh, Reish Hurmenata, the Malka, Birshus, Behegdim, Birshus, yeah, Shalam Elech, Galif Galif a Betira Ila. In Galif is sort of a funny word, it means inscribed, you know, traced. Traced is the better way to, to translate that, you know. So it's from the root of like huh? le, it's from the root of like, like a left. Yeah. yeah. Like a left, galif, galif. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what I'm saying. And here it comes to the to the in Hebrew it comes like galif, right. but we borrowed the Hebrew from the uh, Aramaic. Right. And it wasn't around there in the right. beginning. Okay. Uh -huh. So when you had uh, this uh, galif, galifa, betirelo. Now what? So okay, let's go back. What does it mean? In the beginning, when the will of the infinite began to take shape, he traced in the supernal sky so you get the sense almost as if at this point the tip of the uh, uh, of the tracing tool is about to touch that node, that point, okay? Did I lose you? Mm -mm. No, no. no. Okay. So, at that, at that place, the Zohar says, this is where Bereshit begins for us, at that place. So you have a sense that a permission is given for some tracing to happen, you know, like there is the infinite unmoving and so on and so forth, and slowly up there over zillion of years there arises a tickle that says, or oh, it may have been a nanosecond, you know, it depends which way you go, uh, there arises this thing, and they, he calls it the Ratsan Hakadum Nimelucha. 
הרצון הקדום למלוכה. הרצון הקדום? אה? Did you say Haratzon Hakadom? Hakadom, yeah. Hakadom. Yeah, it's sort of the primal, the primal will as it arises in the will. Can you say the last word after Hakadom? Pardon? Limelucha. Hmm? Limelucha. Oh, thank you. So what you get is It's almost like a calm lake. Nothing is moving on it. And all of a sudden, there's this little thing arising in the center of the lake, you know, and it becomes whatever it becomes, you know, but, but you have, you have that, that, that first moment, okay? If I were to ask, what is the, the response on our side to that, is to get in our imagination to the place where Kamtiani liftoach le dodi, you know, I'm here. I'm just, in the next moment, I'm going to pull the veil apart and ask God to come in and see me as I am. It was a big jump. Huh? It was yes. a big jump. <laughs> I know. But you just did. <laughs> uh, uh, try and do it, you know. It, it's, it's easy to say what it looks like when it's open, you know. <laughs> But until you open that part up, there, uh, there are all these things that come up like, do I dare? Will I still be alive if I do that? You know, it's like, Hilo Yerani Adam Vachai. It's not just a posuk, it's an experience. Any moment, uh, the next step toward the divine will be fatal for me. So what? <laughs> <laughs> Until you get to that, so what? Uh, as she says, it's a big jump, <laughs> right? Yeah. Still, you know, I think Yirat Shamayim is just that moment. when I'm really very scared to open up to be seen by God. But what, what, what is it that, it's not pachat, there's no sakana there, you know. It is not the, uh, ema, because I know exactly what this is. This is about opening up to God. Yeah. And that feeling feels as yira. Yes. Also yira is ye, uh, ye, ra'a. Yeah. That's right. It's like God That's himself. how I go. How do you say to look at something with special glasses? You inspect it. Yeah? Right. And a spectator is a looker. Uh -huh. So inspect, and then you have respect. Oh, nice. Right? And respect is when I come into a room, and I don't think there's anybody there. And then suddenly I become aware there's a person standing there and it'll be looking at me. What happens to my kishkis, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a very real response, mm -hmm. the startle reflex. Mm -hmm. And achein ata el mistater is a, this, this, this is a startle reflex, uh, where he says, achein yeish elohim b'makom azeh v'anochi lo yadati. Wow, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. he comes from, from that place. So, let me, let me um, go back a bit, okay? We were singing and we were getting into a feeling, and the feeling was like, I want more of that. I, I want more. And that's the Mysterium Fascinans that says, come closer. God says, I invite you, come closer, come closer, come closer. Then we went to a place where we, got close to the experience of um, the Mysterium Tremendum, you know, like where you get scared. Mm -hmm. And Rudolf Otto describes, he says, what is the idea of the holy? What does holy mean? Mm -hmm. Holy means just that, that which attracts and scares the out of us, okay? It's that, that, that's the holy. And I tell you, When you ask yourself, where and when do I experience holy, I want to make sure that there should be more of that in shul. 
you know, more, more of that holy. That sense, and what's at this point lacking is the tremendum. Mm -hmm. We are pretty good with the fascinants, you know. We dance in the aisles, we do all kinds of wonderful things there, but the sense of being able to sit back and say, and now for five minutes, see what happens when you try to open yourself completely to God. So now we have these two approaches. The one approach that is the Mysterium Tremendum, which has to do with Yom Yom Naroim. And so as we go back to the Mysterium Fascinans, you know. It's like a um, Nachamu, Nachamu, like this, this weekend. Mm -hmm. You know, it is like a way of saying, it's okay. You've done as much as you can to connect with, with, with that holiness. So then comes for us the question, wait a minute, we're going to go home now. It's going to be a whole other world. This was wonderful. But how am I going to do it tomorrow? Time out. Okay. There are two approaches to religion. One approach to religion is that The discipline is the preparation to the revelation. All ascetic things, you know, whether it's in Hinduism, whether it's in Buddhism, Christianity, and Judaism, you know, Taniyot and, and so on and so forth, and Sigufim, because that's going to get you to that place. So I need to enshrine it in some way. I need to put this so that two things will happen. One, that that momentary contact that we had during the Yom Naroim with God, that that one we need to perpetuate. And so, oh yes, I started to say so. Some people say that the discipline is a preparation, okay? Preparation, you say for the experience? Huh? What did you say, the preparation for the... For tradition? holiness, to get in touch to, with holiness. Okay. My Second. sense is, it's the other way around. Whatever brought us to holiness, it can be because we worked at it or because it came us as grace. It's not, not, not our, in our hands that much. But once you've, you've had a revelation, you don't want to let go of it. So you ask, how might I get that timeless moment into my life again? And here comes Shabbos, you know. Get, get that? How can I bring that um, feeling of love and acceptance that I had, you know? Im kebanim, im kevadim. You can imagine what it would feel if we had really a hit on Rosh Hashanah. The Rebbein Shalom saying, Zalmele, bist mein Kind. You know, if, if, could, could, you, could you see what that would be? Uh, that would be so powerful to be able to, to experience that. And that's what we also want to get out of Rosh Hashanah, you know, im Kibonim. What does that, what does that feel like? to bring that in. What else do we want to do? Oh, you want to say something about, I want to watch out how I eat, I want to watch out how I deal with other people, you know? Do you see the enshrining of, the, of that holy moment is so important to us? And what happens when it is well enshrined? It means, behold rachecha de'ehu, wherever you go, there's a mezuzah, there you have your tzitzis, you know what I'm saying? It's everywhere you're in touch, you're in touch, and that's wonderful. And so now, having enshrined it organically, because that's what the word taryag means to me, you know? Shasa um, and ramach, and what, what does it mean? The bones and the, and the veins. It means the organism, yeah? And when I look where Jews are today, and I ask, 
What does that holy infrastructure look like today? I'm worried. Okay. You see, there is, uh, it's empty. It hasn't got any resources. I mean, you look at Catherine and the, and the 9-11 and so on and so forth. What most people have written about Auschwitz and about uh, the Hurban that happened there, the Holocaust, have talked about the physical element. But what was lost in that God field that we had before, uh, by the death of all these people, and on the other hand, what was released into that God field, don't think it's only lost, mm -hmm. because all those people went out with that last Shema Yisrael, you know? Uh, what, what, and what, what, what kind of a surge of, of energy that was toward the God field. So building that and how to contribute to that is really what this is about, you know? To say, this is the time when I have to install, if you will, the update, you know, the, the Tovshin uh, Samach uh, Vov update of, uh, of Yiddishkeit, of my relationship to God and how is that going to be, and not only mine, but also our. So that's the issue about Binyan Malchut. Okay. So how do we do that? So we're always so good at prescribing what to do. But describing what that's like is, is, is you don't find so often, okay? So let's go and take a look. It's so wonderful to have the, the internet to, uh, as a mashal, you know? Uh, I'm logging on to the internet. I have to say what's my password. I have to log on with my with my uh, screen name. So it goes hinnami heyoni ma. I'm I'm logging on, you know, <laughs> uh, and all the right formulas you you see in some of the old machzorim. It says that the the chazan says then the holy shamus that I made. From the from this formula should help me in the daven and, and then he goes a yasha a and so on and so forth. So you see that there is that that thing that the chazan wanted to be able to achieve. So you have the screen name and you have and you have the log on, and you ask. I'm sorry, I'm using computer because I see Michael and it's a good mashal for mm -hmm. what I want to say, but it's not, it's not exactly how we feel that, okay? So when you look inside of yourself and you say, I'm ready fully, totally to be known by God and I'm, I'm ready to open up. You get a sense what surrender is about. Do you know what I mean? And I want to say that while the old language was that we are mekabel on ourselves, the all of the melech, you know, all malchut shamayim, and we are blowing the shofar and doing all this like an old king of the past, but what we now have experienced was what that what that means you know what I'm saying the mash the, the king and all that is only the mashal the nimshal is what we experience okay so what comes to you when you start thinking about how to enshrine that uh on Rosh Hashanah, how would you like to 
to do it, any of the bumps that came up when we were chanting in the text. It's your turn. How, how to enshrine what? The feeling of this, this feeling of, of the logging on, of the, of the opening up of... Yeah. You, you you talk about it the way you hear it and see it best. It doesn't matter. These I'm I'm using words because I haven't got anything else to, <laughs> that I can. <laughs> no, no, I know, but I, I like the words. I'm, I'm just trying to understand that's our our focus. Um, Good. Just give me a moment. I want to have my ears in, okay? <laughs> <laughs> because you're gonna say something I want to hear. Opening up, you, the the enshrining part of it is is the formality of it, but what's in that? What what goes on while that's happening? Um, if I'm leading, if I'm the shaliach, my focus tends to be going out. Um, when I do it for myself and I'm not leading, or I forget that I'm leading, it's it's more coming in. Um, when it's going on, it's like that the 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 nigun with which you started. You know, I, I really want I, I really want these to, to help these people get this prayer to you, God. We really want to get it up there. Um, but when I'm doing it myself, certain things hit me that have, may have nothing to do with certainly nothing to do necessarily with anyone else there, but also not necessarily anything to do with the the form of the prayer. Um, and the opening up is, 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 which has always been very difficult for me, is to say, that's okay. You know, you, you might be doing this prayer, but your, your, your feelings, thoughts, your opening is in a different area. You know, um, from I want to I, I wanna try harder to, you know, it's, it's the, you know, New Year's resolutions keeps coming back to me. <laughs> And uh, on, on December 31st, we make silly ones. But on, uh, you know, the, the, the first of uh, Tishrei, they come much more in depth. The others are outward, these are more inward. Mm -hmm. and, um, and the resolve lasts a little longer, too. <laughs> Not as long as I want, but it lasts longer. Um, so that when you were mentioning certain things, you know, Tefillin and Talis and these things, these become outward manifestations simply of, you know, my desire to, to reach something deeper, however successful or not I am. Imagine that uh, you have a, an ion uh, pure, air purifier, okay? And you can afford only one. Where are you going to keep it? But imagine you could have as many as you uh, as you need. You know, I remember Racham you had that that machine mm -hmm. uh, was wonderful for uh, deionizing or whatever yeah, it was. We move it from place to place. Right on the need. Right. But imagine if you had such a machine, wherever you're going, in every room it buoys you up. You know. <laughs> so belech is, chabaderech is that kind of a thing, you know, that wherever you go, you should find something to turn you on. Now, a crazy idea, okay? Uh, if instead of using the grid that we're using with electricity, with power right now, we had a thing that whenever two people touch, there is energy for a mile. Mm. 
He talks about it in the Celestine prophecy. Ah. Remember that? The ah. Celestine prophecy ah. from like 10 years ago, yeah. that, that fiction? He yeah, talks yes. about it right there. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you see that, that whole yeah, thing that wants to, that. to find another the way. Bubble of, we all walk in and when we get closer to each other, it's like a zap. Yeah. We exchange those energies right. and we can see into that aura. <laughs> No, we know that we know that there is a, a level where this is really true. This is not just a, a holy fiction, okay? So since we know that there is such a level where this is true, if we had the right kind of uh, research money, if you will, and the right kind of people prepared to do it, to be able to ch to chart that part, what? How do we generate those energies? How can we focus those energies? How can we amplify those energies? How can we direct those energies? Could you imagine if we were to be able to run such an institute, maybe for 200 years? Uh, I think it wouldn't go fast. <laughs> you know, I, I think it's going to take time. But as people would keep on trying out and saying, because we, at this point we don't even have the muscles and the tools to do our interior things with will. You know what I'm saying? Well, it seems that one can try in a very, perhaps superficial way, that every time we meet someone, the kavana is, let me see the divine in that person. Or even before picking up the telephone, thinking, I want this to be a good interchange, whatever mm -hmm. it is, even if it's a, a solicitor that I'll be nice to yeah. the person or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, just that level of kavana that in any interaction I want it to be positive. That could be at least a start. Yeah. Now, it's not you, you easy use to do. You, you use the right word, lechavain. Because what we would want to do is to be able to focus, to direct, you know, to really aim, you know, the chavene tamatara in that way, to really, uh, really produce that thing. That would make sure that so many of the random energies would be either eliminated or co-opted to contribute to the stream of energy that the kavana is bringing us to. But I have um, even... Even pre all of that, yeah. as a shliach tzibur, okay, up there, I'm leading services, and we, we come to this keta, yeah, that we just sure. chanted. So it moves so beautifully from the moment of pachad and, and, and the need or the desire to be seen, and then kulam agudachat, everyone is one community. It's not just a random yeah. individual experience, it's an experience of community. And then it's being elevated to simcha and sason and mm -hmm. tzaddikim, and it's like there is a flow of, it's a huge process here, right here, but it is in Hebrew. And I'm there, a shliach tzibur, with a kahal that probably doesn't understand the world, that, you know, most of them don't understand what this is. And how do I even start to bring the people into that awesome, moment of what you called it in Latin, <laughs> yes. that moment of ira, and, and belief even, belief that in this opportunity here in Rosh Hashanah, when we are all together, there is even an opportunity. We are not just here singing and spending the time together. You weren't here last week, it's okay. <laughs> Start from over here and read through and do it with Nusach. Which one are you reading with the title? Um, it's, it's in English, he's going to do that. Okay. It's from your week, this, uh, from where? No, this is from Hachir Vashavar. Oh. I'll, I'll, I'll share that with you. Go ahead. That your reputation is holy when surround Israel, your people. No, do it with Nusach, like you're, 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 you're leading... I don't know what to do. ...as much as you can, <laughs> out loud, okay? You're, you're doing this with the people now. Go ahead. Let your reputation as holy one surround Israel, your people, Jerusalem, your city, 
Zion, your dwelling place. All right, hold on for a moment. I'm hearing you do that, okay? And re leave a breath between Jerusalem, your city, and all, all those words. Go ahead, do it again. Let your reputation as Holy One surround Israel, your people. Jerusalem, your city. O Zion, your dwelling place. Mm -hmm. David's royal house and your dwelling in our hearts. And here you make a little bit more of a F sake, right? Mm -hmm. Then go on. Make us sense your awe in all that happens. Your splendor in all your creation. So we all feel this awe and with other beings together worship you. Bending together as one whole earth to your will with your whole heart in it. I see your point. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, do you see what I mean? It's so beautiful. It sounded great. Huh? It sounded great. Mm -hmm. Just end it with... Well, you, you, can, you can find any, any uh, niggin for that. The point was that when you say it straight, people think you give them information. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're chanting it, uh, people say, what's going on here, even if they don't know anything. She's chanting it. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Let me give it ear. You know, it's almost like, like the heart runs right after the ear to hear what's being said this way. And you say, Jerusalem, your city. And I could see the YMCA <laughs> tower <laughs> and, and the Harabayit from, from afar. You know, you say, Jerusalem, your city. Uh, and when you give people a chance to visualize what you're saying, and you're saying it in a language that they can understand and put this to it works. And I'll give you a copy of that for the, a lot of the stuff, Malchi Yitzchon, Shafrat, everything. I love it. Done that way, okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Go walk. <laughs> you have so many things going on in your Kepala today, and you're not saying a word, huh? <laughs> My perspective is very different. Uh, for me, I say, uh, dear God, uh, I need to be close to you. Please lead the way. And I continue this dialogue two ways and surrender to the process. You know what? I want to say, Ashrecha Michael Shezachita Laka. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. I don't know how to get close to God, but God knows how. So I, I have to go through that dialogue. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Sabroche. Okay. Shirley, you haven't said anything. Ah, oh, I said enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sing something from, from, from Rosh Hashanah, whatever. From Rosh Hashanah? Anything, Yami no Raimah. Okay. I'll sing the one, the, the only one. Okay. The one and the only one. Just the first part. Avinu Malkeinu Chanenu Thank you. 
Sing something else now. Leshana Hava. Leshana. Leshana. I don't know. I I I I have this song that I have in my head all the time now. It's a, it's this love song that um, it goes about the gate who gets open and I just I, I sing it all the time now. Other songs doesn't want to come in. <laughs> So it's a, it's a love song, it goes uh, <laughs> It's, it have more words, but it's long. But what are the words up to now? What? what? Sha'ar, yeah. asher nisgar. No problem, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kuma, petachehu. 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 Utzvi, edir, tzvi, asher barach, elai, shelachehu. Bring nice. back to me. <laughs> Very nice. And then it's a, long, a love song. It goes on like a beautiful bride come to uh, rest uh, in, in my breast. It's a, for Dodi. It's, it's, so it's so wonderful. Yeah. Everybody who's looking for Basher should learn this song. I know, it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we're yeah. here. I'm singing it now all the time. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so his name is going to be Herschelet. <laughs> uh, yeah, you have somebody? Harbet Zvayot, yes. Ilu hayali mishehu hayiti noten lach ah belev shalet. We'll manifest him. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> There used to be some times that I would urge people in the Aquarian Minion for Rosh Hashanah to ask what name they would want to have for the next year. It was a year when I needed strength. I needed not to be the nice Salman that year. So I asked him to call me Gabriel. <laughs> you know. and then some people still remember that at the Aquarian Minion that they called me. Gavriel during that time. But I only took it for the Sha'a, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a Kedai thing to, to start thinking about. Mm. Nadia and Victor do it in Pardes Levavot. Yeah? And they invite people to adapt the name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I just want to recoup again the issue of Yom Rishon and Yom Echad again. There are Yom Trilad Maasecha, Zikaron Le Yom Rishon. So the question is being raised here. How 
How come we can say Adon Olam Asher Malach B'terim Kol Yitzir Nivra? What did he have to rule over? Yeah, in <laughs> yeah. yeah. Melech below Am, right? <laughs> and there was nothing yet. And what is it? Achlei Kichlot Hakol. Nothing is going to be left, right? So Le'et Naasa Bechefzol Kol is a big, big period. For God's presence begins with the Big Bang and ends with the last black hole. And it's only a moment. <laughs> right. So you can imagine everything that happens, min ha'olam, ad ha'olam, ad ha'il. If you go into that, you have such a, an amazing stretch. So the question is, what does it mean? How could you say, asher malach beterem, kol yitzir nivra, there wasn't any. So if you are um, at all in uh, the language, you might say, B'terem kol Yitzir Nivra. And by the time he gets to Yitzir, he is already, you know, Melech on other levels, and so there are already Neshamas and Sfirot and so on. So you can have Malchut over these things, B'terem kol Yitzir Nivra. Before it comes down to the world of Yitzir, to Ruach, to, 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 to that level. Yeah. Okay. I have this thought that maybe we should learn from this that we should be able to rule over our Yetzir, our desire, even before we let it out. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It hasn't manifested yet, but we should be watching it. So uh, that it manifests in a positive I, I way. I tell you, you have such a wonderful message on the telephone where you say, <laughs> have a good day or, or, or whatever else you want. Unless you have other plans. <laughs> <laughs> you have other plans. I, I, so I love that. It, it, it's like, like, like saying, every time I hear this message, I say, Scheute, <laughs> don't you want to have a good day? What kind of other plans have you got? <laughs> That's wonderful. So come back here. So accordingly, it comes out that there is already shaykh to say malchut before. And that's what I was saying before. It was called the ratzon hakadum limelucha. That you know this big shaft that's going on under the name of um, intellectual, what's what do you call it? Not, not intelligent, intelligent design. Design, right, intelligent design. It's so stupid to think that this design is not, uh, <laughs> that didn't, doesn't, didn't have intellect in it, I mean, uh, so I'm thinking this morning, uh, there's a sun rising in the east, driving along, seeing the big red ball of sun, and starting to think, what a marvelous thing this is with sun and with moon and with times and with green and with season and what, you know, what a, you know, there's now, they have SimCity, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Could you imagine a software where you could create worlds for yourself on your machine, you know? Could you come up with anything better? So there was a guy by the name of Lurvi, who was a great designer, industrial designer, who designed the Studebakers, those were the most gorgeous cars and other things. And he said for some things he would, um, for the inventing something, for a dollar you can have it. But if you want me to make an improvement on the needle or on an egg, I would charge millions. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? It is so. It is so clear. <laughs> you, you, you mentioned egg. You get a sense. You know, how could you propel it out of the uh, through the clock of the of the of the chicken? You know, and in such a way. That, so it has to be agul in one side and has to be a little bit less agul in the other side, and uh, the packaging is perfect. You know. <laughs> I mean, 
for, uh, we haven't found anything better than an eggshell for packaging of, of such <laughs> material, right? So you get to the place where you say, Gewalt, Gewalt, Morabo Masecho, Magodlo Masecho, Kulam Bechoch Masita, Malaharitz Kinyanecho. You get, get excited over that. So when you go into the place from which that divine intellect would get the first glimpse of maybe I should make a world, <laughs> you know? So it's Beresh HaManusa de Malka Galif Galifi. What's it like in that thing? Now imagine for a moment that you have this coming from the lover, the beloved. I think it would be very nice to design a universe in which there would be people with consciousness who would sit one Friday morning and talk about stuff like this. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So they're saying these things happen in Machshavaka Duma de Adam Kadmon. If I go with the with the Kabbalese language, Machshava Hakaduma de Adam Kadmon. So what would be a good response to that? A good response from our side would be, um, you know, when Eve's mother was here, sometimes I would tease her, and I would say, Mrs. Penner, <laughs> could Evely come out and play with me? <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? It's like, uh, the, the the sense that, that, that you get and you say, this is great, you know. And so it's almost like saying, we are saying, you want to play with us? Mm -hmm. You want to play with us? You want to be our God? You know, you go into, into that celebration of that and how wonderful this is. So our response with all of liturgy on Rosh Hashanah, is to strengthen our capacity to receive from that Machshava HaKduma, the Adam Katmon, and to say we will be active and delighted participants in another year of reality with you. Um, in doing research for uh, some hikes I'm leading, I found that the, uh, you're finding unique things about Boulder. The atomic clock here yeah. is not only the most accurate in, on the planet, they tell me it is more accurate than the planet. And there's something about that that bothers me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're talking about the sun and the moon. Yeah. I like visualizing the, the sun rising, not the earth turning, and the moon rising, yeah. not the earth. And I like to visualize that a day is what it takes yeah. for the sun to go around us once, you know. Yeah. And I'm hearing, you know, on this other side that, no, I'm sorry, the earth is off by a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> such arrogance. I, I don't know. It's just... but, but you see, this, this gives us the joy. Yeah. Imagine if I were to have an automobile in which my cylinders and my pistons had no tolerance. They were exactly fitting. The moment I would run the first, uh, light up the first time, mm -hmm. the pistons would expand and it would seize up. So what makes anything work is that their tolerances, they can stand <laughs> a lot of uh, plus and minuses. I'm all, it's faster, I'm all, it's slower, <laughs> you know. That, I think, to build it in in such a way is the most organic way because uh, from Descartes, I mean, take a look, there's a, guy by the name of Velikhovsky, I, I mentioned him a couple of times, Emanuel Velikhovsky, Worlds in Collision, and so on and so forth. So he says that there was a, a, a planet that came in and collided with Mars, and that's where the asteroids are. And when that happened, there was a, a north-south reversal, so the sun rose on the, in the west and said in the east. Stuff like this was going on at that time. Hmm. And since that time, it is no longer 360 days exactly. 
that comes out from the yeah. world's in collision. Now we have 65, 65 and a quarter. You know, uh, you know, hell, it's not, it's not the, the clockwork of Descartes that he had in mind. So what I want to say back again, if I would today write um, a Machser on my understanding what the deep level of, you know, the psychohalachic stuff of what Rosh Yom Kippur is supposed to do, mm. you know, how would I go about doing this? First of all, I want to say I would not eliminate shofar and, and stuff of this sort. Why? Because I would want it to have still a kind of um, dimension into the past, you know, to be able to have a lot of those archaic things that do great things inside of our deep psyche. I would want to have them there, including uh, the uh, the teglach, you know, and, and the honey and the apples and all that kind of stuff that goes with it. I certainly would want to keep Tashlich around. Mm -hmm. I'd want to say, do something with, 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 with Tashlich, you know. If I were to design something like this, I would say, I'd give you some stuff to throw into the water, but you'd have to dip it into something beforehand so it should be biodegradable. <laughs> you know, it would be like saying, don't throw stuff away to pollute more, you know. Put it in such a way that it should be good. Sort of a composting, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, could you imagine we'd make up a, a, a big compost heap in, in the back of the shul <laughs> and we start bringing in a variety of compost, you know, things uh, um, that we, that would be Zeka Parosi, you know. Here's, here's a little onion shells and here's egg shells and here. You know, I start saying, and this is for this part, and this is for this part, this is for this part, but be. So, stuff like this I'd like to keep. You have the, uh, the somebody sent an email around, I guess it was last year, with the different types of breads for different sins. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. sounds like what you're mm -hmm. talking about. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like that one. Well, you can just do little pebbles, you don't, you just take from what's there, uh -huh. and you don't introduced a new element. Mm -hmm. You just collect little pebbles and you can meditate on them and each pebble can signify a part that you... And if you pick them up from the side, from the beach side of that, mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. For me, um, when we live in this abundant world, um, and I feel a very strong need for sacrifice. There is not enough sacrifice going on, for my opinion. Uh, on a social level, and um, in time of Rosh Hashanah, it's even stronger, I think, than in Passover to make the cleanup. And I, what I would like to see our people doing, uh, me, uh, but the Tashlich, to just give away everything I didn't use this last year. If mm. it's my clothes, if it's the books, if it's the, if it's. Um, and cups and things I didn't use and give it to other people to use and then also to take something that I really like and to give it to somebody. <laughs> something that will be even a little bit not so comfortable and to give it away if it's a necklace or something that I like and to give that away and then to start you know, then to start and then maybe to dip myself in the water after I give that, you know and, and I think that would be more appropriate for the time that we live in now, because we have so much stuff, and... Uh, we need to incorporate that into the machser, but, you know, you can also go tashlich during the aseret yemei tshuva. Right. So that would be good, that instead of having tzom gedalia, we would have the day when you bring all this stuff... <laughs> Somewhere. Uh, Potlatch. Yeah. yeah. Potlatch is the thing. We did it for Sheba Aleo Shalom, oh. you know. Mm -hmm. she, we gave away her hats and mm -hmm. some of the oh. undies and so on. Yeah. And so forth. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, good. Okay. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, so we, we add that. What else would you think we should add to make it to make it in this way that for we, it would give us something for the whole year to take along? Well, I think that 
I don't know if this is the question you're asking, but it, it seems like there's power in the nusach that you would want to keep steeped in the nusach. Mm -hmm. I'd like to keep nusach. The mm -hmm. question is for how much? Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, it depends with whom I would do the service. Um, we used to have those wonderful days when we were out in Fellowship House Farm, and the things that we did in those in those years were wonderful, wonderful things. And so Rosh Hashanah was really a whole day thing. We would take time off mm -hmm. um, for a little rest after after the meal, but then we'd meet again and we mm -hmm. would do things around the pond mm -hmm. with Tashlich and we would keep on doing process for ourselves. If we hadn't finished doing Malchiyot, you know, Malchiyot, what trumps in your life? You know, Zichronot, what memories do you want to install in what you're doing next? Mm -hmm. um, Shofrot, you know, and what do you want to publicize to people? You know? Yeah, this this is something we need to do. So I mean, there's so much that that we would put in of that basic structure. Um, I think we need some good music. Um, yesterday I went to a chasana, and what struck me was how narrow the the people's uh, repertoire is that uh, when they needed slow things, they didn't have many slow things to do. It's like, if it hadn't been for a Shlema, they would have nothing. You know? So at least they have that. But the repertoire is very narrow, very narrow. Even with people who have a wider repertoire about Chazanut, about Hebrew stuff, about Jewish stuff, and so on and so forth, how would they like to have a shtickle of Beethoven for Rosh Hashanah? You know? I think, I think it's necessary sometimes to start thinking about it. Um, when you look at what those people have written that could be used for liturgy, it's amazing, you know? Um, Beethoven writes, uh, this Psalm 17, the heavens declare the glory of God, you know. And you can imagine a huge choir going, Die Himmel rühmen. <laughs> right? And then the women go, This is <laughs> You know, and you, uh, just wonderful. And I'd like to get overwhelmed sometimes by. Uh, by m music in this in this way, so I'd like to see if, uh, a kind of collection of music, for instance, before people come for mincha. Uh, Barber's adagio, the, uh, Albinoni's adagio, oh. lentos from from uh, from from uh, Mozart, you know, stuff like that. Stickler uh, Bach. There, Mendelssohn, you know, I, I, I <laughs> you know, I can go with that, and that, that would be really wonderful. Yes. I was when I was in Israel. Now uh, I went to this concert of a friend of mine. She's a, a musician. Uh, she's Israeli, but she lived in India for many years, and she's a beautiful singer and a tabla player. And she took a lot of uh, um, psukim, and she sang it on the ragas. Mm -hmm. And I, I had this idea of doing that long time ago, but she did it, no. and I was there in the concert, and it was so beautiful. It was one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard in my life, because the words were melting, on, and the ragas are so f soft and feminine and deep, and it, it was just pouring, 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 sacred language, and she was sitting there for like one, uh, one two hours, and it was so beautiful. Yes, so something ever, like that, you know? If there's ever a CD like this, you, <laughs> and you can find it, please get it for us. I okay? will, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, did, she, does, she doesn't have a CD yet, but... Uh, well, it, it's, when, when I can hear that fusion, but look, Sophia, Chofia. Yofia. Yofia. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. When she is doing uh, her uh, kirtan, mm -hmm. it, it builds up in a mm -hmm. way. When I first heard it, I said, meh, kirtan. Mm -hmm. 
somebody is schlepping this together and hasn't got anything to do with it. But then I saw how really powerful yeah. it is. Yeah. What, what this woman in Israel is, they do is a little different from, uh, it's a little different because she's, really she's taking the text and she, she gives the text, I don't know, it's just, it was so deep. I would like for you to sometimes take one of those poems that I did for Krishna yeah, and the I other one. Yes, I and, and make a melody and, and perform it. I know, okay? I should do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All okay, right. let's schedule we, a concert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's time for today, so, oh, yeah. so call to. Um, mm -hmm. This Sunday in Mirzash, I'm going to be at the church. Um, uh, and so if you can come, it would be nice to have your mm. support. Sin Church. Yeah. The Sin Church. Sin Church. Synagogue Church. Sin Church, okay. <laughs> it's called Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran, and it's uh, on 63rd. Yeah. What time? 11 o'clock. In the morning. Yeah. So that's number one. Number two. A week from Wednesday morning is going to be something at Interface on, um, uh, I think, the 13th or something like this, on Jewish teachings on the afterlife. It's for the, those shrinks and clergy okay. that meet at Interface. In Yesod. Uh, yeah. Where and then, in JCC? No, that's in the hospital. That's in the 4th Street Hospital, you know, the uh, Mets. Huh? Mapleton House. Mapleton? Mapleton, yeah. Yeah, and you'll see there are signs that say interface uh, if you come. It's 7 seven seven thirty in the morning. In the morning? Yeah, 7.30 oh, in the morning on Wednesday. Interesting people, there's bagels and stuff like that too. <laughs> then there's going to be something yeah, on, for, about high elbow at four years old, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So good. And this is a wonderful idea, especially if we can if we can hook this up with um, the storm. Mm -hmm. Give away stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know what? If you can talk to uh, to someone and then have uh, Nave Kodesh and and um, Parde Salvavot send something out about that, uh -huh. so that it should be on the Sunday between the Sunday before Yom Kippur, the Sunday of Aseret Yom Kippur, to bring the stuff together. That would be really good idea to do it. You know, every time we get a good idea, I mean, if you don't act on it, then you don't get any new ones. Um, that's like the uh, old monks in the desert. And every day they would have a verbum for you, a verbum, a word. What's the good word for me? You know, the Chassidim would say, it's a good word. So they'd come and uh, the... He would give him a verbum, something holy. One day they, the two of them come and say, do you have a verbum for us? He says, no, no verbum today. What do you mean no verbum today? He says, I don't know, I don't make them up. When you come and, I, and something is on your soul, then a verbum comes down, I give you a verbum. But most probably you didn't do anything with the one I gave you yesterday, <laughs> so I haven't got a verbum for you today. So that's that's wonderful. We got to do something about these things. Hey, <laughs> Yashikoya. Simon, can I ask you a quick question? Please. When you were going over Machiot and Zichronot and Shofrot, yeah. For Zichronot, you said, "What memories do you want to install?" Yeah. I didn't catch what you said for Shofrot. Right. I didn't say much, but I I, I pointed to the word to use the word shofar. Sometimes you want to say a public announcement, you know. So I was saying something about proselytizing for it, passing the word on. Outreach. Thank you.